we were really excited to tell the story of Miss America was all the parallels from what was going on in the 1970s to what's happening today. Hello, AFI Movie Club. I'm Anna Bowden, one of the directors of Mrs. America. And I'm Ryan Fleck. I'm one of the other directors of Mrs. America. And I'm Davi Waller, the creator and showrunner of Mrs. America, one of AFI Awards' top 10 television programs of the year. We spent the pilot in the world of Phil Schlafly, and this great sequence is at the end of a big speech she gives to the housewives about why she's against the Equal Rights Amendment, and now she's sending this newsletter out with her thoughts. I remember talking with Davi about how we kind of express this beginning of Phyllis Schlafly's journey to become a very vocal opponent of the Equal Rights Amendment and the beginning of her ideas going viral. And what does that look like in the early 1970s? And she did it with her newsletter. And so with Rob, our editor, we put together this series of images of how it feels to have this letter being thrown out into the world and read by all these housewives that were part of her team of people who she knew um, and kind of getting the word out about the Equal Rights Amendment. Thomas Crown Affair, I believe, was one of the influences for the split screens that we referenced. And this visual montage that Brian and Anna created, we used throughout the series. This scene served as our transition. We thought we wanted to go from the woman on the far right to the woman on the far left, who's the trailblazing visionary. And of course, it's Shirley Chisholm. Mrs. Chisholm, how are you feeling today? Um, I feel wonderful. It's one of the most marvelous things to happen in our country at this moment. Uh, for the first time in the history of our nation, a person of color, a woman at that, is running for the highest office in the land. We love this idea of showing Willie, who's doing all the housework in Schlafly Home, actually catch the announcement that Shirley Chisholm is running for president. It was not in the original pilot script, but when we were breaking episode three, which really features Shirley Chisholm in her run for president, we realized, like, we really want to seed that earlier in the series. Like we wanna be able to jump in to Shirley mid presidential run, but to do that, we were like, well, where are we gonna put her announcement that she's running for president? Where, where can we fit it in? And we came up with this idea to actually use it as this transition from Phyllis Schlafly's world into the world of the feminist. Um, and it really actually worked. I, I feel like it made the end of the pilot so much better. And this was taken directly from a real clip of Shirley Chisholm that Brian and Anna recreated. I remember this, Anna, we were recreating it and Uzo was doing a wonderful job, but there was something missing at the end. And it was that smile. She turns to the camera and she just smiles really big. I expect to go all the way. Ow! Everything just came together at that point. I love that smile. That was just captured her perfectly. I was so excited. I remember the day that you came to us and told us that that's um, where you were going to move it, not only because it means that we got to shoot it. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite iconic archival moments, but also because she's such an important part of the movement and becomes such an important part of the series. Shirley then carries us through this kind of archival footage and then all of a sudden we're on the back of Bella and her famous hats. And in that stark contrast of the energy of now coming into this feminist world, it's so much looser, so much more what we think of when we think of the 70s and all of these energetic women who are kind of talking over each other and enjoying this celebratory moment. And it was such a fun moment in the script to be given to say, how do we show these worlds really colliding and introduce all of these larger than life feminist characters for the first time in this one scene. We have our first serious female yes. candidate. Woo! She's, She's crazy. Crazy. And yesterday the equal
equal rights amendment sailed through the Senate. That's right. Oh. Hawaii ratified less than 30 minutes after the Senate vote. Delaware and New Hampshire will have it ratified by tomorrow. We had seven years, but we'll get it done in one. No, and even Nixon is on our side. And thank you for that last minute. Of See, day. he's not all bad. He's mostly bad. <laughs> if we would like our women's caucus to be bipartisan, perhaps the Democrats in this room could refrain from trashing the president at every meeting. I thought trashing Nixon was bipartisan. <laughs> Something I love about this, Davi, I didn't know how bipartisan the ERA was. Republicans and Democrats working together to pass this thing. Nixon supported it. It was really not controversial at all until this moment, it feels like. That's why it was so important to us to have Elizabeth Banks' character of Jill Ruckelshaus, who's a Republican, so that it was such a surprise to me too that this wasn't left-wing feminist. This was a real collaboration of Republicans and liberals, left and right, and it was really bipartisan until Phyllis Schlafly showed up. Who the hell is Phyllis Schlafly? Uh, it's Schlafly. Oh, she's a right-wing oh. nut from Illinois. Oh, we don't need to worry about stuff like this on the fringe. I've never even heard of the Phyllis Schlafly report. It's Schlafly? What? There are two else. Oh. Well, what do I care if it's Schlafly or Schlafly? It's not like I'm ever going to say that fucking woman's name again. <laughs> this is our chance to really show, like, how did the feminists at this time in 1972, what did they think of Phyllis? We've just spent almost an hour with her where she is seen as she'd want to be seen, where she's the center of her world. But now we see how the feminists think of her. And to them, she's just on the fringe. They don't see the storm coming. It's so tragic and bittersweet how you end this first episode, Davi, because if you know anything about what ends up being the history of the Equal Rights Amendment, to see all these women celebrating, like they have it in the bag, and then to be here now, how many years later? Um, and it's, <laughs> I mean, it's it. insane. And that really kicks off the journey of this series. Now, you and I both know that the ERA is not about uh, equality, it's about power. And the left is making a power grab. The Reagan revolution is going to fail. One of the reasons that we were really excited to tell the story of Miss America was all the parallels from what was going on in the 1970s to what's happening today. 50 years ago, Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman to run for president of the United States. 50 years later, we finally have Kamala Harris becoming vice president. Uh, the ERA, which was long dormant, has finally come up again in Congress. They're trying to pass it again and get it into the Constitution. There are these patterns and cycles of how change happens and how you make meaningful change in this country. And we wanted, through telling the story from many years ago, really shine a light on just how hard and painful it is to really move forward as a society. Mm -hmm.